Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. We welcome you to the Bethlehem Missionary yeah, 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 yeah. Baptist Church. Pastored by the Reverend Dr. Alfred C. Bernstein. We are Church Through the Roof, located 684. Elijah Woods Street, right here in the city of Richmond, California. And we come to bless the Lord, yes, Lord. on this second Sunday of July, 2020. For the word of God says in Psalms 116, I, what shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits toward me? Yes, Lord. I will take up the cup of salvation. Yes. yes, and I will pay my vows to the Lord. Now in the presence of all his people, Precious is the sight of God in the death of his saints. Oh, Lord, truly I am your servant. Yes, Lord. I am your servant, the son of your maidservant, and you have loosed my bonds. Yes. I will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving, yes, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord now in the presence of all his people and in the courts of the Lord's house and in the midst of you. Oh, Jerusalem, praise the Lord. And that's what we come to do. We come to give God the praise for he is good and his mercy endureth forever.
Sell it all. Hallelujah. 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 Let's prepare now Hallelujah. to so pause good, so the moment of meditation presented by our own Pastor Carol. Good morning, Bethlehem and others having the blessed opportunity to participate in our worship service. At this time, we're going to prepare ourselves for our BMBC pause. So as we typically do, if you can locate yourself somewhere comfortably in wherever you're watching us today, making sure that your feet, if at all possible, are flat on the floor, your back is straight, and that your hands are resting on your lap. If you're safe and comfortable enough where you are to close your eyes, you can do so at this time. And if not, find something that you can focus your attention to. And we will begin with our three deep breaths. So we will take the first inhale and our audible exhale. Another inhale and an audible exhale. And finally, another inhale and an audible exhale. And as you allow yourself to focus on your breathing, Air coming in, air going out. And if there are distracting thoughts that start to come into your mind, recenter yourself and continue to focus on your breathing. Our scripture for today is going to come from Romans, the fifth chapter, NIV version. Peace and hope. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance and perseverance, character and character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Again, we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character hope and hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts as we breathe in God we breathe out hopelessness as we breathe in God we breathe out confusion as we breathe in God, we breathe out discomfort. As we breathe in God, we breathe out pain, suffering, anxiety, sadness, restlessness, exhaustion, 
breathing in God allows us to center in God's peace and God's hope, even in the midst of suffering. We breathe in because God has given us the breath to breathe. We breathe in because God has given us hope. We breathe in God because God has given us peace. We breathe in God because God has given us love. As we prepare to resume with inside our worship service, we will begin with our first audible inhale and audible exhale. Thanking God for the love, the hope, and the peace. Another audible inhale, an audible exhale. Praising God in the midst of suffering. And finally, another audible inhale, an audible exhale. As we recenter on these final words from the scripture, therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ through whom we have gained access by faith and to the grace in which we now stand and we boast in the hope of the glory of God not only so but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that sufferings produce perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all your land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. We are his people. I said we are his people. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. I don't believe you heard me. I said, for the Lord is good wherever you are. The Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Good morning to the Bethlehem Missionary Baptist Church and all of you who are sharing with us through this Facebook experience or YouTube, however you are accessing this service. We give God praise and thanks. 
for each and every one of you for sharing, and then certainly we're grateful to God for another day's journey. Amen. Thank you so much, Reverend Dr. Carol Alvarez, for leading us once again uh, in amazing space that we call and consider a Sabbath pause. There's a lot of things that we're discovering through this pandemic that um, we don't need to continue doing, and there's some things we need to keep doing. And one of the things I believe that we need to continue doing is to pause and don't forget to breathe. Amen? Because the scripture says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Amen? Thank you again for the BNBC team that continues to work and to pull us together so that we can provide a worship experience for you, my sisters and brothers, even in the midst of this pandemic. Thank you, the Reverend Donnell Thomas and Pandemic Praise Team. Amen. For being so faithful uh, during these months. Uh, and we just give God praise and thanks for you. I trust and pray that you have been practicing uh, safe protocols and, and I trust and pray you were ex especially safe during this fast holiday experience July 4th and as I told you sermonically I don't celebrate it uh, because it didn't include me. Amen. But I trust and pray you continue uh, being diligent, being diligent in fact, you might want to be over vigilant in your diligence uh, with the COVID-19 protocols because it is spiking right here in California and uh, we have become almost uh, one of the states that represents an epicenter of the coronavirus. So yes, um, keep your guards, wear your mask, continue to wash your hands. Don't rush your hands to your face. In fact, I've almost stopped putting my hand toward my face uh, during this experience. And then of all things, practice uh, social distancing. One of the things that we can give God praise and ought to be a shout all over um, Facebook land is that here at the Bethlehem Church during this coronavirus experience, we have not had yet one person infected, and nor have we had to conduct a funeral for anyone of the Bethlehem Church who died from the coronavirus. And that is probably because you all have been diligent and vigilant uh, in the protocol. So continue doing it. Act like it just started because it really has. Amen. And so. We give God praise for that. Thank you, God, for those of you who continue to share with us uh, in our Tuesday talks. Just a wonderful experience. And uh, we just had such a hopeful uh, experience this past Tuesday. And we'll be looking for you again uh, this Tuesday. Thank God for the Reverend uh, Marvin Weston They're doing a marvelous job uh, during this section of our Christian Empowerment Hour. Amen. Sunday school, he's tag teaming with his wonderful and amazing wife, uh, Maya, and just blessing us in a wonderful way. And we give God praise and thanks to him. Amen. Uh, and our wow experience just really became an amazing wow, although we had a very uh, unusual and horrific uh, Zoom bust um, last week. Uh, I want to thank God for our Minister of Administration, um, Lisa Johnson, all the way in Houston, Texas, who quickly uh, gave us a way of, you know, uh, kind of minimizing the trauma of that horror, and uh, she directed us very quickly and got us right back in the Zoom space, and the Lord bless our wow experience. Amen. So we give God praise. I want to encourage you, my sisters and brothers, this week um, our California State Baptist Convention will be having a one-day uh, conference, 
and it's posted on our Facebook page. And all you really need to do, if you read the, post book, the Facebook uh, page, uh, there in that announcement, there are classes, and all you need to do is to zoom in on those classes. I will be teaching one of the classes, 10 a.m., July the 16th, and I will be doing a class on ministry in this current era, prayer, protest, and pandemic. And so that will be at 10, and then there's an amazing um, panel with just some incredible people, and we are excited about that. Some of our favorite people will be involved in that discussion, like the Reverend Dr. Frederick Haynes, uh, uh, Dr. Carter uh, out of Jersey, and then our own uh, Erica Godfrey, and then the amazing Reverend Dr. Jacqueline Thompson will be a part of that discussion. And so you want to take advantage of that. Amen. And I'm just thankful to God for President Pleasant. Shout out to President Pleasant, uh, who is visionary enough and courageous enough uh, to avoid, find, you know, just looking for a lot of reasons not to do things, but finding a way to do things. And he's doing a marvelous job uh, by providing us uh, with uh, this um, uh, virtual a convention experience. Amen. He will probably go down in history as our virtual president. Amen. I want to ask the deacons of the Bethlehem Minis uh, Missionary Baptist Church, I need our deacons uh, to kind of um, step up your commitment to your ministry. I really need to do that uh, and need you to step up your ministry, uh, your commitment to your ministry by checking in uh, on your members, your families, checking in on them. Amen. Just letting us show them some love. And then it would mean so much for you to be present uh, in our meeting places. You need to be present in Christian Empowerment Hour. You need to be present in WOW. People need to see your face. Amen. And so I want to encourage you uh, to do that, uh, my brother. And I only have a one sister at the moment. Uh, but she's been uh, on spot, so I'm really talking to the brothers. Amen? So I want need you all to step up your commitment to your ministry. Amen? God bless you um, for uh, this day, and we're just really excited about how God is continuing to use us. Some of you have just been just absolutely amazing in your continued support for the ministry, even through these very challenging times and you continue to support it uh, through your giving and certainly through your prayers, amen. And we certainly uh, need your prayers, but we also need you to continue giving uh, through Givelify, uh, mailing in uh, as well. Um, some of you all are finding some very creative ways to give, but we thank God and we just want to encourage you to continue doing so, amen. Oh, please don't let me forget to thank God for our amazing tech team uh, from, for the Praise Bible Fellowship Church uh, uh, who have been just, just incredible uh, during this experience. And uh, we have basically taken two churches and almost become one church. Say amen. And we just give God praise. Amen. Come on, bless God once again as our amazing team. Uh, the pandemic praise shall come and render praises unto our God. Amen. Hallelujah. <coughs> As we prepare for the word of God, even in this pandemic, we want to encourage you, my brother and my sister, to keep the faith. Huh. Uh. What do you do when you're at a crossroad? Huh. Keep the faith. What do you do when the world seems like it's on your shoulders? Uh. Keep the faith. Right where you are, you may be driving, you may be watching, but wherever you are, I want to encourage you yes. hold on, hold on. to keep the faith. Yes. The question is, the question is. Mm, when you're standing, 
against the wall. When your back is up against the wall. What? What do you do? Ah. My, 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 my. Yeah. Say it again. What do you do? What do you do? I'll tell you what to do. Hold on. Hold on. And keep the faith. Keep the faith. Ah, ah, ah. Yeah. My, 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 my. We come to encourage you, my brother. We come to encourage you, my sister. Keep the faith. Keep the faith. And just in case you didn't have time to write that down, we're going to say it again. The question is, question is when you're standing at the crossroad, when you're standing at the crossroad, what? what do you do? When the fork is in the road. When the fork is in the road. My, my, my. What do you do? Ah. When the world seems to be on your shoulder. When the world is on your I'm shoulder. I'm talking to somebody. What? What do you do? Ah. And when your back is up against the wall. When your back is up against the wall. What? What do you do? Ah. Hold on. Hold on. Keep the faith. Keep the faith. <laughs> I know we're not supposed to touch each other, but just point to somebody and tell them, keep the faith. Keep the faith. Faith is the substance yeah. of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Yeah. Come on. Keep the faith. Keep the faith. Get on your phone. Get on your Twitter. Get on your Facebook and tell somebody, keep the faith. Keep the faith. Keep the faith. Keep the faith. My, my, my. Where do you look? Where do you look? <laughs> Where there's nowhere else to look. Where there's nowhere else to look. Where do you turn? Where do you turn? Ah. When there's nowhere else to turn. Where, else to turn. Where do you go? Where do you go? Ah. When there is nowhere else. When there's nowhere else to go. What do you do? What do you do? You're in the master's hand. You are in the master's hand. And the master has and a plan. Keep the faith. Keep the faith. <laughs> my, my, my. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Come on, keep the faith. Keep the faith. I believe you, God. I believe you, God. I believe what you said, and I stand on your word. Come on, keep the faith. Keep the faith. Keep the faith. Ah. Keep the faith. Now, this is why we keep the faith, because he has worked it out. He has worked it out before. He will work it out again. Come on, trust God. your life. Come on. Victory is ours. Victory is ours. Is ours. Ha. Come on. Victory is mine. Victory uh. is mine. Yes. Victory is yours. Victory is yours. Ha. Victory is ours. Keep the faith. Keep the faith. Ah. Keep the faith. Keep the faith. 
saying, be the best. God's got your back. He says, I'll be with you. Be the best. Always, even until the end of the earth. Keep the faith. Be the best. Hallelujah. The Lord is my shepherd. Be the I, and I shall not want. Keep the faith. Be the best. Goodness and mercy shall follow, shall pursue, be shall the chase best. after me. Hallelujah. Come on, keep the faith. Be the best. I trust you, God. I trust you, God. I, be the best. Keep the faith. Keep the faith. Keep the faith. Be, the faith. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. Be the faith. God's got you. God's got you. Be the faith. Keep the faith. Keep the faith. Be the faith. He's done it before. I want to just, will you just lift your hands right where you are and just say, keep the faith. Keep the faith. Mm. Thank you, Lord, for taking care of us. Despite, despite where we live. Uh, systematic oppression, hatred, racism. Uh, we thank you that you're still with us. Uh, Keep the faith. Keep the faith. Lord, you who are the object and the subject of our faith, you understand that for most of us, faith can be a challenge. And during these very troublesome times, faith has been most challenging. But we want to come, God, and offer a word that will encourage people to keep the faith. Grateful are we for this time and we pray God that you will use even the words that we share as inspiration and encouragement for people, for our brothers and our sisters to keep the faith. Anoint this moment we pray, sanctify each ear as well as my mouth. And may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh God, who is our strength and our redeemer. In your name we pray. Amen. Oh, keep the faith. Oh, Amen. Thank you so much for that song that will certainly be used to help us. God can use it to help us get where we need to go. Uh, sermonic. It won't be with you long. Uh, one of the things that this season has allowed for us is opportunities to, to share in a number of worship experiences. Bethlehem, I do need to preface, let me just preface before I jump into the text. I want to preface um, by asking you to be in prayer uh, for the Osborne family as well as for Glenda and her sister Brenda, for their family. Both of those families have uh, had to suffer um, some incidents of violence where members of the family uh, have suffered gunshot wounds, and so uh, let's be in prayer uh, for them. Amen. I want you in your 
meditative time. And I trust and pray some of you all have really taken advantage of the book that we've written, um, Hope for the Lord, uh, and using it for your meditation. People around the country uh, have really uh, surprisingly have responded to that piece uh, so incredibly, and I trust and pray that Bethlehem is doing the same uh, for your meditative moment. But please go to this text this week at some time, and that's in Psalm 46, Psalm 46, a very familiar passage. And uh, I'm just going to open up with the first verse, but I'm going to certainly include the entire psalm uh, in my little talk. Uh, but the first verse, you all know it, uh, songs have been written from it, uh, and many of you have used it even in your times of difficult and challenge. And it says, and I read from the New Revised Standard Version, it says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Amen. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. I wish y'all get it. In trouble. And that's what all I'm going to talk about. God in trouble. Amen. God in trouble. Again, let me borrow from my beloved brother, uh, his approach to preaching. Uh, he raises an incredible question and tries to seek to answer it uh, throughout the duration of the sermon. Uh, that Reverend E.L. Branch, he might would ask at this time, have you ever heard a song that helped put some troubling perspective uh, or some troubling issue in perspective? Have you ever been moved by a song uh, that helped you as you were dealing with some troublesome circumstance and that song helped you to put the issue in perspective. You, you know, music has a way of slowing down life and providing us with a better perspective. Perhaps it's because, Donnell, we can't sing and run at the same time. Amen. No, you can't sing and be running around at the same time. You, you know, we have to slow down and even sit down to hear and to appropriate and to appreciate good music. And likewise, singers have to slow down so they can listen uh, to what it is they need to hear so that they can write and compose music. Music is a contem plaintive enterprise. I wish I could make it plain. It, it, what it does, music calls people to sit and be present. The Psalms represent Israel's song book. They hold, the Psalms hold the musical expressions of a people who experience God um, in a variety of of life circumstances, you know. They slow down and set to music for how they experience God in the vacillating and fluctuating circumstances in life. In the good times, they sang songs like this, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all your land, and serve the Lord with gladness. Or, Give praise to the Lord and praise his name. Make known his deeds among the nation, what God has done. Sing to God. Sing praises to God. Tell of all of God's wonderful works. In bad times, they would sing such songs as, Fret not yourself. I wish I could make it plain. Because of evildoers, be not envious of evildoers, for they shall soon be cut down like grass and like green plants wither away. Or perhaps a song like this, by the rivers of Babylon, we sat and wept when 
We remember Zion there on the willows. We hung our harps and wept as our captors tormented us, demanding that we sing songs of Zion. And in the psalm before us, uh, somehow they found a way. Y'all need to get this. They found a way to praise God in trouble. Are y'all with me? You read it when you get time, you know, uh, as the landscape of life had shifted all around them. They affirmed their faith in song and sang, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Are y'all with me? That, that's a good song in a troublesome time. A good song provides us a means of affirming life and love and hope, even in the midst of death, hate, and despair. A good song will do for us what we, you know, we used to say the evening news, but now the news is 24-7. So a good song will do for us what 24-7 what news will never do. A good song will lift us to places where CNN, MSNBC, Headline News, Fox, Cron, Cron 4, CBS, or Fox News are incapable of doing. And so I urge you, my brothers and sisters, during this pandemic season, don't be so fixated on the news. Turn off the news. Mute your phone and listen to some great music. I wish I can help somebody this morning. If we listen to more music, our faith can be affirmed. If we listen to more music, our moanings will turn to dancing. If we listen to more music, life won't seem so un immanageable, and the world won't seem so fearfully out of control. If we listen to more music, our faith can be affirmed. If we slow down our mind just long enough to separate ourselves from all of the discord in this world, then we can just appreciate life through the affirmations of good music. I do not know, I do not know the specifics of the psalmist's world, but it was clearly troublesome. The dates and the circumstances that created the context for the writing of the composing of this song, they are not known, but, but the world in which this song was composed is clearly filled with trouble. It's all right there in the psalm. When you get time, you read it. Natural calamity, civic unrest, nations in uproar, strong nations, they call them mountains, but strong nations literally falling apart. Wars and rumors of wars are daily conversation. It's almost as if the psalmist had teleported or used some type of time machine and landed in America 2020. Like muddy waters singing the blues, the psalmist does not deny trouble. I wish I could make it plain. Trouble is everywhere. People are talking about trouble, you know. It appears that if it wasn't one thing, it was something else. Trouble painted the landscape of their life, or their life was filled with trouble. Yet life and living is affirmed and faith in, is, in God is restored by singing. And it comes forth, y'all need to get this, it comes forth in the very first stanza. I like that. The psalmist doesn't focus on the trouble, but he, in the very first stanza, he said, God is our refuge and strength yeah, yeah. and ever present help yeah. in trouble. Y'all didn't catch that. In trouble, in, in the midst of it, in the lived experience of trouble. While trouble is going on, the presence of God is affirmed. And if I could attach a proposition to this sermon, Darnell, it would be we affirm our faith in God when we acknowledge God in trouble. Are y'all with me? Right there, in trouble. 
And for those of us who shared with us this past week in WOW, the psalmist seems to be referring to what we talked about in WOW to God in the here, right? In the here and not there. Are y'all with me? In the here and not there. I had a cousin who lived here in our city, and uh, he said the Lord called him to preach, and he preached uh, one sermon, you know, and that was the only sermon I ever heard him preach, but it was a good sermon. Amen. He preached that sermon, and then he went back to drinking himself to death. But I'll never forget that one sermon, and that one sermon, maybe that's all he was supposed to preach. The sermon was from, from Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, and he said he talked about the isness of God. I wish I could, you know, you know, and then he went on back to drinking himself to death, amen. But we could look at this psalm and say, yes, this psalm is speaking of the hearness of God. Are y'all with me? Yeah, of the hearness of God. He, he is testifying of God in a way that, that, that I'm trying to suggest that we ought to be for one another. We ought to be present for one another in the here in the moment, and God is most God, if I'm hearing the psalm correctly, that God is most God in the here. I wish I can make it plain. Not in the there. Are y'all with me? A God worth celebrating in the sweet by and by must first be real in the nasty here and now. That what Dr. J. Alfred Smith might say. You know, we, and to tell the truth, we know nothing of God's love over there. Are y'all with me? But we most powerfully experience God's love when God shows up here. Are y'all with me? And somewhere, I do not know when it happened, but somewhere in my lifetime of trying to be a pastor, the Lord impressed upon me to stop telling people you're going to pray for them. You know, don't tell people you going to pray for them. Amen. You know, if you going to pray for them, pray for them right then. Are y'all with me? In the here. Are y'all with me? And then there's never no awkward moment to pray for people. I prayed for people at stoplights and, uh, you know, before walking across the street. Don't tell folk you gon' pray for them. If you gon' pray for them, pray for them in the moment. I wish I could make it plain. Pray for them in the here, not the there. And if prayer is going to mean anything, let it mean something in the here, in the now, and in the moment. Am I making this plain, y'all? Y'all, if I ain't making it plain, perhaps the text can make it plain. Because when you read the text, the text is just saturated. It's just it's filled with present tense verbs. Are y'all with me? It's just filled with that God is our refuge. Are y'all with me? That's present tense. He said, and then it says, there is a river. That's present tense. God is within her. That's Presence tense. God lifts his voice. Y'all read it when you get time. That's presence tense. The Lord Almighty is with us. That's present tense. God breaks. That's present tense. God says present tense. The Lord God of Jacob is our fortress, present tense, in the moment, in the here, in the trouble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the psalmist, he starts by affirming the hearness, y'all got to get this, the hearness of God, and then he moves to describing the trouble. Right there in the opening stanza, its first line provides a perspective that will help us not after the trouble, but in the trouble. Are y'all with me? My late daddy would say right about here, he would say, just as show as you're born, we are in trouble. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, we are in trouble. We are in the worst of the pandemic. Are y'all with me? We are living out the deadly days of COVID-19 compounded with an economic disaster and then flooded with the continuing protestations of the drama of racial unrest. We 
are in trouble. Unless you've left the planet, you cannot go anywhere because this is all over the world. We are in trouble. Therefore, as believers in God, we need to affirm our faith in God who is with us when in trouble. Are y'all with me? And see, too many of us, I suspect, Brother Stewart, too many of us have subscribed to a trouble-free God. Amen. We, we want all blessings and no burdens, all success and no struggle, all gain and no pain, all pats on the back without stabs in the back, all glory with no glory. We just want the good and no bad. And then there are some of us, we are like many trumps, you know. That is, we want to deny trouble. You know, we want to ignore it. We want to act like there ain't no trouble. The trouble is not here and everything is fine. Yet the psalmist would have nothing to do with the trouble-free God. The psalmist had nothing to do with being in denial of the trouble. He puts it right there up front in the opening line. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Are y'all with me? In trouble. And the King James, you know, the Bible I grew up on, it said, and, and ever-present help in the time of trouble. Are y'all with me? And, and we are, brothers and sisters, we are in the time of trouble. And, and no one knows how long we're going to be sheltered in place. No one knows how long we're going to be wearing all of these masks. In fact, some of y'all have become fashionable in your masks. Some, we don't know how long we're going to be socially distancing ourselves. We don't know how long we're going to be unable to congregate and come together and hug and love and make a joyful noise to the, to the Lord, our time of trouble does not have a calendar date when it's going to expire. It looks like we're going to be in trouble for a long time. You can't deny it. You can't ignore it. We are in trouble. Are y'all with me? The infections are out of control and the death count is frightening. Yet if we are to receive any blessings from this experience, we need a perspective that enables us to experience God in trouble. Are y'all with me? I know some of y'all can't wait to shout when it's all over, but, but when it's all over, that's there. That ain't here. Are y'all with me? We need to experience God here, you know? And if we don't want to miss God's presence and miss God's power, we need to affirm God's presence while we are in trouble. So, so the question might be then, what benefits, what what might we derive that could be beneficial for us uh, from acknowledging God in trouble? You know, like Chris Cuomo, you know, I, uh, uh, the psalmist, he gets right with it. He gets right at it, you know. He said, he said God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. And then the next line, he said, therefore, therefore, we will not fear. Are y'all with me? See, God in trouble, get this, y'all, God in trouble takes the fear out of trouble. God in trouble takes the fear out of trouble. Now, you did not mess this up or, or misconstrue this, take it out of context, because I ain't saying don't be afraid of the coronavirus. You do need to be afraid of the coronavirus, and you don't. Don't be concerned about the economic downturn, but you do need to be concerned about it because you know black folk have always been the last hired and the first fired, you know. And we all know that racism is a scary reality. Yet God in, in trouble does not allow our fears, thank you for that song, does not allow our fears to blind us of our faith. Now, honestly, y'all, I, I don't want to have anything to do with COVID-19. I don't want to have anything to do with COVID-19. 
19, you know. And that cause, for that cause, I went the other day and took the test, you know. And some of y'all have been reluctant to go take tests. You need to take the test, you know. It ain't that bad, and it's over before you know it, you know. It's not that bad. Are you with me? But, but as for the economic downturn, I, I don't know about you. I don't want to have my lifestyle economically devastated because of COVID-19, you know, you know. Nor do I ever want to take risks with white men with badges and guns. That's some fearful stuff, y'all. Yet I'm not going to allow fear to blind me of my faith. Are y'all with me? The fear is real, but I ain't going to allow the fear to eclipse my faith. And I need a faith perspective that assures me of the presence of God in COVID-19, in the trouble. I need an, uh, uh, an assurance. I need a perspective on faith uh, that assures me of God's presence during an economic downturn as well as in the midst of raging racism. I need a God who will not only come when I call, but I need a God who will be here before I call. Yeah, yeah. Are y'all with me? God in trouble yeah. does not allow our fears to blind us of our faith. Yeah. Are y'all got that? Yeah, God in trouble um, does not allow our fears to blind us of our faith. Then the psalmist does something else. He does something else, which I think is quite interesting. You know, young folk going to grab this one, you know. The psalmist declares God as a refuge and strength. He says that before ever stating that God is an ever-present help in trouble. He says first that God, y'all need to get this, is our refuge and strength. He says that before. He says, God is our ever-present help in trouble. And so the second idea that leaps from, me, from the text for me is that God in trouble shades the trouble. Are y'all with me? God in trouble shades the trouble. And I use shade, you know, in the manner of the young folk, you know, which means, you know, uh, to get, you know, you know, even in the midst of saying something good, they say something bad. I wish I could make it plain, you know, you know. But, but the word shade is actually short for the German word schadenfreude. Schadenfreude, which means harm and joy. Y'all, somebody, y'all get something to shout on. Harm and joy. God in trouble enables us to find some joy even in the midst of that which would do us harm, you know. God in trouble shades the trouble. Oh, y'all, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm certain I'm, I'm sitting in the Bible. Shading is in the Bible. Joseph said what you meant for evil, God meant for good. Are y'all with me? James said, count it all joy. Y'all get it? When you face trials of many kinds because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Jesus put it like this. He's shading trouble. He said, in this world you shall have tribulations or trouble, but be of good cheer. God in trouble shades the trouble and then uses the trouble to bless us in trouble. Now, this, this, y'all, this shouldn't be too difficult for y'all to, to understand or to embrace or to see it because I've yet to talk to anyone who has not found something good in this bad situation. Here we are, I've been in this, going into our fifth month, but I've yet to talk to anyone who has not found something good in this troublesome situation. You know, people are getting closer to their family. People are learning some new things. You know, we even got some folk in Bethlehem they're growing gardens, you know. The land been out there all the time, you know, and they finally 
growing some gardens, you know. They're doing like the black mystic, Howard Thurman, you know. They're taking time to watch the grass grow. Are y'all with me? Some of us, we're even talking to white people most seriously about racism. Isn't that something? We're having some serious conversation with white folk about racism and even be able to tell white folk that racism is a white problem. It just hurt black people. Are y'all with me? And, uh, and, and some people are even finding ways to make some money in trouble. Some, you know, some people are quite, you know, industrious, as the old folk would say, but they're having an entrepreneur spirit, and they're finding ways to make money in trouble. Now, I can confess, sisters and brothers, that, that I found some new joy in just being a pastor. Are y'all with me? I found some new joy in just being present with the Bethlehem Missionary Baptist Church. You know, I'm not traveling like I used to be. I'm here. Are y'all with me? You know, I'm, somebody say I'm here. I'm here. I, I'm not worrying about there because I'm what? I'm, I'm here, you know. I'm here. I'm present with you, and I'm, I'm just enjoying it to the utmost, and I'm here, present, and I'm even finding ways to help you to be more present with one another. God, y'all need to get this, God in trouble shades the trouble. Yes, he did. And then finally, I'm going to be done here. He, he, he takes the fear out of trouble. He shades the trouble, but then God in trouble handles the trouble. Whatever else this psalm does, it gives music to the fact that no matter the nature of the trouble, God will handle it. Though the earth gives way to a pandemic, God will handle it. And the waters of racism, rage, and foam, God will handle it. And though big shot leaders quake and tremble, Watch what the psalmist said. The psalmist said, there is a river. Well, Y'all don't even know when to shout. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. Now, that's an interesting statement to make, you know. It's interesting because the city of God, you know, is Jerusalem. And I've been to Jerusalem a few times, and there is no river in Jerusalem. There ain't no river in Jerusalem. Are y'all with me? You know, I've been there, but I've discovered something, you know, you know, that, that songwriters are known to exaggerate. Uh, amen, amen. They, they exaggerate. Songwriters, you know, they be talking about that they can make a gray sky blue. You know you're exaggerating. You, are, are you with me? You know, ribbons in the sky. Talk to me, Don. Yeah. And dreaming the impossible dream. How you going to dream a dream that's impossible, that's hyperbole, that's, you know, that's exaggeration. And hyperbole or exaggeration is something said that you're not meant to take it literally, but to try to understand it figuratively. I, I wish I could make it plain. And so in holy hyperbole, the psalmist is talking about the river, you know, providing streams, making glad the city of God. What the psalmist is really saying that the grace of God is going to show up in the sacred spaces and be like a river whose streams make glad the city of God. Oh, I wish I could make this plain because... That's what we are experiencing in our sacred spaces right now, even in Facebook, in Zoom rooms, and in conference call. The grace of God is like a stream. Oh, I wish I could make it plain. Refreshing our faith. And I don't know about you, my sister and brother, but I'm glad that right now no one knows how to stop the virus. Now, now, don't get me wrong. Please understand, I hate the fact that one person died, let alone 130,000 people have died, and I'm praying for every one of the people who are sick of the virus. Yet the virus has served notice. Are y'all with me? The virus has served notice that there are some powers that are beyond our control. 
Are y'all with me? We can't see the virus. We can't smell the virus. We can't touch the virus. Yet the virus touches us. It finds us. And it seems like the virus has the capacity to sniff us out. But at the same time, no one can stop it. We can't ignore it away. We can't lie it away. We can't bully it away. We can't buy it off. We can't deny its power. We can't tweet it away. We can't vote it out. We are humbled by the virus because it exposes everything else that's wrong with America. God is using a virus to expose the ugliness of racism and the inequality of wealth in the most wealthiest country in the world. We are in trouble. Are y'all with me? But God can handle the trouble. Thanks be to God. God is the only one who can handle the trouble. And in God's own time, God's going to open up somebody's mind. They're going to not only find a cure, but they're going to find a vaccine. In God's time, because God can handle it. And like a stream, like a river rather, whose streams make the sacred places glad. I'm glad that God is our refuge and strength and ever present help in trouble. Not out of trouble, but in trouble. Wherever you are, you in trouble because the world is in trouble. You ought to give God praise for being a God in trouble. Let us pray, God, we bless you and praise you being that kind of God. You are not afraid of trouble. You are not immune to trouble. You are not absent when we are in trouble, but you are God who meets us in trouble. God, we admit right now that we are in trouble and we need you to be God for us in the moment, in trouble, to be here, not just a God over there. Thank you for Jesus who gave the ultimate expression of God in trouble. His name was Emmanuel. God with us. Assure your people even now that you are with us in trouble. Let them know, God, that because you are with us in trouble, fear should not have the last word. And because you are with us in trouble, you're going to shade the trouble. You're going to give us some good things even in the midst of this bad thing. And in the midst of this trouble, we bless you and praise you because we know, God, you can handle the trouble. Assure your people, give us the faith perspective. Put the music of this psalm in our hearts that God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. In your name we pray. Amen. God bless you, my sisters and brothers, and wherever you are, we certainly pray that you hold the faith, you keep the faith, put some music in your life. If perhaps something has been said during this sermon or through this worship experience uh, that has touched someone who, uh, as of today, has not personally professed the faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we want to appeal to you now, do so, because wherever you are, you're in trouble, and you're going to need a God in trouble. So we appeal to you now to give your life to the Lord Jesus. Please register that, that desire. You can do so on our Facebook page, and certainly you can get in touch with us. 
But wherever you are, I believe there's always somewhere close to you some people of God gathering who are sharing the music of this moment. And they too are saying, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. So do as you must. Give your life to the Lord and attach yourself to some people who have a faith perspective that holds on to God in trouble. God bless you and may the Lord keep you now unto him who's able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his presence with exceeding great joy. Y'all wise God, our Heavenly Father, be both power and dominion now and forever. And the people of God said, Amen. God bless you. Have a good day. Have a good day in the Lord. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, yes.